because that's when the heavenly uh, signs, scriptures, but also the Giza pyramid and Enoch's departure are marked within that time frame. So last time we already covered the conjunction of Venus, the beloved with Uranus, typing the Enoch forerunners, and also showing that the Lord's fiery uh, embers, his fiery stones of judgment are ready to roll, ready to be cast down. And in parallel, the works of the bride will also be tried by fire. So before you, you see, uh, an opening picture I just thought was stunning when I first saw it. It's a um, it's the concluding picture of a series of five. So if you want to see how this uh, picture was uh, prefaced, there's a lead up to this picture of four different photographs. And you can see how the setting sun is actually developing into this beautiful angel. And to me, that was just another expression of the Lord encouraging us for it, but also showing us that his coming will be foretold as we look up. Looking up, we will see our redemption drawing nigh. And by combining what we have come to know and understand about the heavens, the celestial signs, the gospel in the heavens, but also the heavenly clock in conjunction with the scriptures, but also the witness he gave to us in the Giza pyramid, which is a time clock, and its designer Enoch, there's a beautiful encoded message in the antechamber, the chamber adjacent to the king's chamber, pertaining to the exact length of life of uh, Enoch, 365 years, 88 days and nine hours, and that is going to come into play in that time frame, June 17th to the summer solstice. So this is what I'm going to focus on time-wise in this particular update. June 17th, the altar with burning coals and Scorpio's butterfly cluster rise to their highest. Egypt's fiery altar is highlighted by Enoch's departure and transformation date. Matching uh, the prophetic word and given to me through Brother Christopher Rydell, the Red Rocks are ready to roll. And the second word he had given to me to share with you was that the trumpet would sound when the wind chimes sing. And after watching uh, Jonathan's, Jonathan Clegg's amazing uh, travels to New Mexico, Albuquerque, and the work uh, that the Lord had for him there, he was speaking about the devouring wind. And combining that with what we have learned about Enoch, Uranus, and the kingdom of heaven coming with a great shaking, most likely also with nuclear war. Um, my understanding with regard to that prophetic word as of yet is, is that when that devouring wind is coming is when the trumpet will sound. So, on June 17th, the morning star Venus, the Beloved, which is the David bride type, whose name means Beloved, enters into the constellation Taurus the Bull. Taurus denotes the Lord coming down to both rescue his own, but also judge the wayward and the lost. The moon will rise later in the evening at the star Theta Capricorni, right in the center of the constellation Capricorn, where the transition between the right portion, the atonement goat, into the living fish proceeding from that blood atonement is marked. So right in between these two triangles. The Lord lifts up two special celestial markers this day. Because firstly, there is a butterfly cluster in Scorpio, which will reach its highest point in the heavens around midnight. Of course, the butterfly um, in its nature symbolizes transformation into a higher, more beautiful, glorious order. And it also types our soon change into the glorious image of our Lord Jesus. In addition, there's also a cluster of fiery embers uh, in ARA, technically NCG 6397. So on my astronomical calendar, these two events are actually marked 
and I didn't study them before because I thought they were just minor details. It appears they're not. <laughs> so both the fiery embers are not just visible in the throne room as we covered previously, but the constellation era is actually the fiery uh, altar of the uh, lake of fire. It's right next to the constellation Scorpio and the uh, cluster, which is the center of these fiery embers, is actually at its zenith, at its highest point in the heavens. And that's what I've come to understand, always the time that the Lord wants us to focus on that particular sign. So Ara, the fire altar or burning pyre, will also reach its highest point in the sky, June 17th. Biblical astronomer Bullinger stares how Ara's prophetic meaning uh, points to a burning pyre. It's just below Scorpio's tail. So by the time the planets have overcome that um, marker on the ecliptic, it is actually an expression of having uh, the identity of an overcoming, having overcome the heart star of the scorpion and Terry's, and then its deadly stinger stars. And of course, we do that by faith. So Era is placed upside down with its fire burning and pointing downwards towards the lower regions called Tartarus or the abyss, the outer darkness declaring the Lord's victory, the Lord's victory over his enemies. Ira is also associated with a scourging flail, the same one that was used to rip open the Lord's flesh at the day of his crucifixion. His uh, flesh being torn open and his death actually opened the door back to heaven for us, but also opening the veil of the temple. We know that the, ve the veil of the temple was rent in twain when he died. The celestial rising of the constellation Ara strongly resonates with the prophetic word given to me of the red rocks being ready to roll, as cited above. <clears throat> the flanking butterfly cluster in Scorpio resonates with transformation. So, Bullinger speaks in the zodiac of Dendera, Dendera, Egypt. We have a different picture giving us another aspect of the same judgment. It is a man enthroned with a flail in his hand. His name is Bao or Bo, the same name as Hercules has, and meaning who cometh. Just like the constellation Bodhis, the herdsman, the harvester, is also derived from Bo. It is from the Hebrew Bo to come, as in Isaiah 63, verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? with dyed garments from Basra. This is a coming of the Lord in judgment, as it is clear from the reason given in verse 4. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was no none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation and my fury, it upheld me. Isaiah 63, 4, 5. And at the location of the summer solstice, the sun is already nearing. The sun is actually already marking out that right arm of the coming Prince Orion in the celestial silver gate. So that is the Lord's strong arm. The completion of judgment, therefore, is what is pictured both by the burning pyre and the coming one enthroned with his threshing instrument. In Arabic, it's called al mugamra meaning the completing or finishing. The Greeks used the word al sometimes in the sense of praying, but more frequently in a sense of imprecation, of cursing, of judgment. This is the curse pronounced against the great enemy. This is the burning fire pointing to the completion of that curse. When he shall be cast into that curse when he shall be cast into that everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. This is the allusion to it written in the midst of the very scripture from which we have already quoted, Psalm 21. Have we not we been waiting for nine, this day our whole lives? Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. The altar is also associated with Noah's Ark 
and Vestia's fire, the Roman goddess, now connected to the asteroid Vesta. And of course, uh, as always, if the portion in the article there's article going to be a ruckus coming. Um, Let's all be strong in the, the Lord, because He's the, so the only one that's going to protect you. And the transformative butter.